Everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a 10-game Major League Baseball slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Before I get started, can you guys smash that like and subscribe button and also share the video? I really do appreciate it. Uh, with that said, we have some core plays here on DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, DeGrom at pitcher, Contreras at catcher, Edmund and O'Neill in St. Louis. Now, you might be wondering where Dylan Carlson is. Um, uh, he is questionable to play today, so I just want to... Be aware of that. He would be close to a core play, uh, but uh, if we look at his information here, uh, we notice that he actually came out of yesterday's game with a pinched neck, and so he may not uh, play today. So we'll have to wait and see if he's healthy for this game. Over here on FanDuel, I have Edmund and O'Neill as core plays as well. There's actually quite a bit of good value on FanDuel, um, whereas DraftKings is a little bit harder to find value. Um, and there are some stackable teams today. Obviously, St. Louis, Atlanta, uh, Toronto, and Texas are the top four stacks. Uh, Seattle has some low-end stackability as well. Uh, so we have a couple good options there. And we have some really good pitching today. Um, so let's go and get started on DraftKings here. We're going to start with DeGrom for Texas against uh, Kansas City. He's got a great matchup here. And he's had 18 strikeouts in the first two games of his career, of his season. Sorry. And he has uh, he had one bad game all last season. Don't really overthink it here. Degrom is a good play. Uh, Kansas City has stru struck out more than uh, all but five teams in the uh, in Major League Baseball this season, and so he they look like a very uh, strikeout heavy team. And Degrom should take advantage of that. Shohei Atani is also a very good option today against Kent against Washington. He has some nice upside here. Um, he also has good case stuff, just like uh, DeGrom does, and he's actually a decent uh, P2 option on DraftKings uh, or as a alternative to DeGrom if you want, uh, due to his price. Uh, prices are not as high here on DraftKings today for pitching, and I'm a little surprised. I figured these guys would be over $10,000 easily, uh, but uh, they have great matchups, so I really do like both of them. Um, then we'll look at uh, Pablo Lopez uh, for Minnesota against the Chicago White Sox. Now, Lopez has a bit of a streakiness to him, but he started the season extremely well with two really good games. Uh, he also has a pretty good strikeout uh, rate, and he's a good P2 option on the slate. Um, I don't know if you ha he's a must-use, uh, even though his price is pretty good. Uh, he doesn't have the easiest matchup compared to the top two pitchers, but he definitely has some utility here. Uh, now, Dustin May uh, for the Dodgers against San Francisco, uh, he's a little bit risky here, though he has had a good start to the season. Um, he has had two good games last year uh, as well. He hadn't played very many games, though. That's the big issue last season or this season. Uh, but he does have some upside here. His price is not super ideal, but he is in a pitcher-friendly matchup, so that's definitely a bonus for him. And then uh, Alec Manea for uh, Toronto. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Um, but uh, Detroit were out of a pretty lefty lineup today, which uh, Manoa does have more trouble with lefties than righties. Uh, but he is viable on the straight as a P2 guy. He's a little bit risky, but his price is cheap enough that he's definitely worth taking a look at on the slate. Um, I would also mention um, that we have a couple, like, low-end guys like Kyle Wright, who's kind of risky because he hasn't pitched in a while, uh, but he has some upside in this situation in Cincinnati. And then also Hayden uh, Wazinski for Chicago Cubs against Seattle. Now the weather is going to be an issue here, uh, potentially, when it comes to having him, giving him some trouble. Uh, but he has had some really good games last season, and I expect him to have some more upside than I expect. But uh, I wouldn't necessarily use either one of those guys. I just wanted to mention them because they don't have a whole lot of data since they haven't played many games the last couple of years. Uh, with that said, guys, let's go ahead and get into the catchers. Uh, we're going to start with William Contreras. Uh, he's priced pretty fairly at $4,200. He hasn't hit a home run yet, but he does hit the ball decently well. And even though he's had some rough games, uh, he has he has a really good upside in this matchup. Um, he didn't do much yesterday, but he's got a better situation today even, so I do like him a lot on the slate. Uh, Cal Raleigh, also very interesting today for Seattle. He's got good home run potential in this game. He didn't play yesterday, which was disappointing, and the good situation is available today, uh, just as it was yesterday, so I do like him in this matchup. But he's a little bit riskier than Contreras is, uh, due to the fact that uh, the cat pitcher for uh, his opponent is a little bit better than maybe his metrics is given, but there is a lot of 
wind in that game today in Chicago, so I do think that it has some potential for Seattle bats, and so that's why they're worth taking a look at. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt at first base, obviously, is a great hitter. Um, he has big time upside in this matchup. His price has actually dropped down a couple hundred dollars from what it was last game. And so I do think he's got some viability here. He's somewhat high risk, high reward today just because his price is so expensive. Uh, but he is actually rosterable if you play around with your lineups and try to figure out who goes where. Uh, you can definitely uh, get him in here. Uh, then we're going to look at Nate Lowe uh, for Texas, who's a a little bit less expensive. Uh, he's not super ideal because of his price, but he has good metrics in the plus matchup today. Not super safe, but he is a decent matchup and has home run potential here. Uh, Nelson Cruz, also in a similar situation. A little bit overpriced, just like uh, Lowe is, but he does have good potential. He's hit the ball extremely well this season, and he's got a good matchup in this situation, and he's definitely a home run potential uh, game. And then, uh, finally, for a value play, uh, Rowdy Talese from Milwaukee. Uh, while he hasn't hit the ball particularly great this season, he does have harm one potential in this game. He's got a great matchup, uh, great metrics for this one, and his price is pretty cheap, so he's definitely rosterable on the slate. At second base, uh, second and third base are definitely kind of tough here on DraftKings, uh, sort of. Uh, but we do have some good options here, first with Nico Horner for Chicago Cubs. I do think the Cubs game has some good utility here. He doesn't have a home run yet this season, but he does have some upside. He's had some really good games. I really do think he has some up utility in this matchup. Uh, Colton Wong uh, for Seattle, also in a very good spot. Now, he hasn't hit the ball well to start the year. Uh, but he has had two decent hitting games the last two games uh, he's played, so I do think he has some utility here. In a matchup where, uh, while I do not love the hitters for Seattle, they do have some stackability upside here. Uh, Ryan uh, McMahon for Colorado, also very interesting today. He does have home run potential in this matchup. He's a little bit overpriced, but he does have that utility. Alright, so let's go ahead and move into the next position at third base. Uh, we're going to start with Nolan Arenado um, for St. Louis. Now, he has got some nice upside here. He's a little bit cheaper than uh, Goldschmidt, which definitely gives him some more viability here. Uh, this position is also pretty hard to find a lot of good value at, uh, and he does have home run potential in this matchup in, uh, in Colorado, so he's definitely an interesting play. Um, Patrick Wisdom is also a guy that I like. Uh, he's a little bit cheaper option if you want to you know, contrarian play. He has some run potential in this matchup in this park where the home run should be able to flow a little bit here. And then also Eugenio Suarez uh, for Seattle. He's a pretty interesting option as well. He hasn't hit a home run yet this season either. Uh, but he does have, he has hit the ball so far extremely well. To start the season, he's got a decent matchup here. Now I'm also going to mention, uh, I didn't have this guy written in, but I am going to mention, um, from Colorado, where to go? Uh, Montario for them. He typically is a lot better at home, and he does have home run potential in this matchup, and he is a good value play, uh, or maybe a Hail Mary play to help you pay uh, down some other position to get some other guys in your lineup. So he's definitely a way you can do that if you want. Um, so let's go ahead and move into shortstop. And I think Tommy Edmond is really just the best option available at this position. Uh, he hasn't hit a home run yet this season, but he will. Uh, get hits and stuff a lot of games, and he's got a really good situation here, and so I really do like him a lot in this matchup. Uh, but if you want to go off of him, Corey Seager is one way to go about it for Texas. He's hit the ball extremely well to start the year, and he's got good big-time upside in this matchup. Um, same goes for Willie Adames uh, uh, for uh, Milwaukee, where he looks like he's going to be kind of a sneaky play on the slate, though his price is pretty expensive, and that is a concern. Uh, but if you want another alternative at uh, the value situation, uh, Louis Rengifo for the LA Angels, he's kind of a boomer bust play today, have high risk, high reward, uh, but he does have some utility in this matchup. On into the outfielders, um, we're going to start with Tommy Edmond. Um, now, Edmond, um, I'm sorry, not Edmond, uh, Tyler O'Neill. Tyler O'Neill's price is pretty fair. He did take the day off yesterday despite having the great metrics for that matchup, but he still has good metrics today, and so he's definitely somebody I like a lot in this situation. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, Dylan Carlson. Uh, now, the issue with Dylan Carlson today is that he may not start 
because he did have apparently a pinched neck or something yesterday. So we'll have to wait and see. And his price isn't quite as ideal here on DraftKings as is on FanDuel. But if he does start, then he'll be somebody to consider. Uh, Mike Trout, also very interesting today for the Angels. Obviously super expensive, really hard to roster today. He actually does need a home run to even be worth uh, utilizing. But he does have some upside here. Though he has struck out uh, six times the last two games, so do keep that in mind. But he is a top-tier play uh, today. Acuna is also a very interesting play today for the Braves. He's played extremely well lately uh, to start the season, and that's why his price is all the way up where it is. And he has big-time potential. He just missed a home run yesterday, too, and he had three uh, hits on the day, though they were all singles. Uh, but uh, he has some good matchup utility again today against the Cincinnati Reds. Uh, then we'll look at, at Jared Kalinick. And if you want to go with the Seattle sl uh, uh, stack, he's definitely somebody you can utilize to do that. He's had some really good games recently in three straight games. In fact, over 10 fantasy points. And he has some good upside here if he draws a start. Uh, then uh, Juan uh, Yepes, uh he could actually also play first base for St. Louis. Uh, he's just minimum priced, or, you know, pretty minimum priced, and he has some upside here. Uh, he hasn't played a ton of games yet this season, but if he draws a start, he'll definitely be a way to help with value. Uh, Jordan Walker, also a guy that can help you uh, with some value as well, and he's hit the ball really well to start the season, and so I definitely like him as a good option on this slate. Uh, then we'll look at Jesse Winker uh, for uh, Milwaukee. He's a little bit more expensive, but he's kind of due for a home run. He does tend to hit some home runs occasionally, and he started the season really solid, so I do like him as a good matchup man on this slate. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see how lineups play out, but he definitely has some utility here. And then Dalton Varsho for Toronto, a great matchup for him. Uh, he's hit the ball really well to start this year, and he's got a good price on him for this particular slate, so I definitely think Toronto has some good utility in this situation. With that said, let's go over to FanDuel. Now, I don't have as many core plays over here, as you can tell, with Edmund and Tyler O'Neill, but the, both of those guys have some really good upside here. But at pitcher, um, pitching is a lot more expensive here on FanDuel than it is on DraftKings. But today, we do want our guys to score, uh, you know, 50 fantasy points if we can. And Jacob deGrom is definitely the best way to go about that. Uh, he's had two really... Uh, He's had an up-and-down start to the season with a 17 fantasy point game against Philadelphia. But he's got one of the easiest matchups on the season that he'll probably have here against Kansas City, who strikes out a ton, and he's also a big strikeout guy. So he looks like a near top-tier play on the slate. Almost a core play, except for the fact his price is so high. And because Otani is available, who also has as much upside as he does. And so either one of these guys are going to be very good options on the slate and really good matchups. Uh, I definitely like DeGrom a little bit better than Otani, but they both have utility. I'm also going to mention Dustin May. He's a little bit cheaper. He's a little bit riskier, uh, but he does have some good starts, and he has uh, he has enough upside to give us get us in that 40 point range. Uh, but uh, if you want to save some money, he's somebody you can use it with. I don't necessarily think it's that smart to go down on the pitchers too much because there's a lot of value across the slate. But uh, uh, Alec Manoa is also another good option for uh, Toronto. He's got some nice upside here. He actually has 45 fantasy point upside in this matchup, and he's worth taking a look at as a considered I option against Detroit. So uh, with that said, let's get into our other plays. First at, at the uh, catcher slash first base. Now obviously on, draft ca on FanDuel, rather, you can put a guy in catcher, or first base. You don't have to use catchers at all. And then you also have utility spots. So you can put an extra player from any position. As well outside of pitcher obviously. Uh, but we're going to start with Paul Goldschmidt. Who is actually pretty decent priced at $4,200 here. He's got really good metrics for this matchup. But I really think he's a great option on the slate. Uh, Wilson Contreras. Uh, also very interesting for Seattle. Or sorry for St. Louis. He's a little bit underpriced here on FanDuel. And so he's got some utility. He hasn't hit a home run yet this season. So he's got some nice potential here in this matchup. Uh, Kawar Ali is also a kind of a value play that you can kind of take away from Contreras. If you want to go to a different catcher. He's definitely a way to go about it. And then obviously a Vlad a Jr. He has some sneaky upside in this situation. And he's definitely a good option off of Paul Goldschmidt. He's also just hit the ball extremely well, hitting 439s to start the season. So he looks like a really solid option on the slate, and he's priced pretty fair for the position. 
At second base, uh, we're going to look at Nico uh, Horner, who is cheap enough here on FanDuel to make him definitely worthwhile here. He's hit the ball really well, and he has some nice upside in this matchup. Uh, Colton Wong is a good option for a Seattle stack. He has some utility here, though he hasn't hit the ball extremely well to start the year. He has some nice upside, and he's definitely worth taking a look at. Um, then we'll look at Simeon for Texas. He has some utility in this matchup as a home run potential guy, though he's high risk, high reward, so do keep that in consideration. Uh, Ryan McMahon, also very interesting here for uh, Colorado, has some utility here. A little bit more expensive than I'd like him to be on DraftKings, but he's decent price here on FanDuel. Definitely worth taking a look here if you want to go with a Colorado stack. Um, at third base, uh, we're going to look at uh, Nolan Arenado for uh, St. Louis. He's uh, fairly priced here on FanDuel, a little bit more expensive than I'd like him to be, but he has some nice upside here and has some good utility. Uh, and then we'll look at Jordan Walker, uh, who has, if he does draw the start, he could actually play third base or outfield on FanDuel, and he's had a really good start to the season. I like him with some good upside here, uh, though I do worry about him falling off as the season progresses. Uh, Patrick Wisdom, also a little bit underpriced here on FanDuel, has some nice upside. Uh, third base is really full of good options here on the slate. Uh, Austin Riley, also available at a really good price at $3,700 as a good option for a home run potential uh, swing as well. In the outfield, we have uh, Tommy Edmond, or sorry, at shortstop rather, uh, we have Edmond, who has, a, who is a core play for me. I think he's got all the upside in the world today, and he has a really good matchup, assuming he just draw the start. Uh, but if you want to go off of him, there's a couple ways you can do it, and his price range and Dan's v. Swanson's one way. He's hit the ball pretty solid to start the season. He doesn't have a home run yet, but he will likely hit one pretty soon. Uh, Corey Seager, also very interesting for Texas. He's got some really good hitting so far this season, and he's got some nice upside. He's hit the ball extremely well the last few games, and as long as he's hitting the ball well, he's definitely worth taking a look, especially on a Texas team where he's got some good plus matchup. Uh, Willie Adames uh, uh, also has some really good upside here for Milwaukee. He's hit the ball really solidly to start the season. He's only had a couple games without a hit. And so I definitely think he's definitely worth taking a look at. Now, Dylan Carlson is somebody that's a little bit risky today because he did leave yesterday's game with a uh, uh, injured neck. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see if he does play today. So check your lineups closer to Slate to find out if he plays or not. But if he does play, he'll definitely be somebody to consider. Uh, Tyler O'Neill is a core play as well. At, and he has some really nice uh, price point for his upside. And he's got a great matchup. Uh, Jared Kalinick, also very interesting here for Seattle. Uh, a little bit risky considering the fact he's a little bit boomer bust, but his price is so cheap, he can help you pay up for some other options on the slate. Uh, Yepes for uh, St. Louis is a good way to work on that St. Louis stack if you want. Though you can only put four uh, stackable players on FanDuel, so do keep that in mind. But he's definitely one of the guys that has some you know, home run potential in this matchup. And then Ronald Acuna. He's an expensive play on FanDuel, but he looks like a really good option. He's hit the ball really well to start the season, and he has some nice upside in this matchup. Uh, Mike Trout, also very interesting today for uh, the Angels. Has big-time upside, but he's high-risk, high-reward because of his price. Makes him a little bit harder to roster. And then Ian Hopp. Uh, anytime that he kind of shows up in my uh, metrics, I really do tend to like him. He's hit the ball really solidly to start the season, and he's got some nice upside in this plus matchup against Seattle, and so he's definitely worth taking a look at. With that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Like I said, if you don't mind, can you guys smash that like and subscribe button and share the video? I really do appreciate it, and have a nice day, guys.